Last week in a poll here on YouTube, y'all let me know that you wanted the scoop on drugstore makeup dupes. Now I didn't want to make a video full of the same drugstore dupes that everyone's already revealed and talked about, so I spent all day searching and swatching my collection and I found five high-end makeup products and five drugstore makeup products that seem similar enough, but in this video we'll test them side by side to see whether they are actually dupes. But first, if you're new here, hi, my name is Miranda, welcome to my my channel where we talk all things budget beauty. If that sounds interesting to you, then become the newest member of the Slashed Squad by hitting subscribe and the bell icon. The first pair of dupes we'll be testing today are concealers. This is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Correcting Concealer against the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer. Now I always feel kind of funny comparing L'Oreal and Urban Decay products because L'Oreal owns Urban Decay and they do have a lot of products that seem so similar that I get suspicious if they are the same product. I'm not saying that they are, but both of these concealers offer up to 24 hours of full coverage with a natural matte finish. Now I don't think these are gonna be the exact same shade, so bear with me. We'll start out with the Stay Naked Concealer. Now what's interesting is that both of these concealers are counterparts to a foundation of the same name. And people have compared the foundations to each other, but I have tested the foundation side by side and they didn't really seem too similar because the Urban Decay Stay Naked Foundation was a lot more matte than the L'Oreal Infallible Foundation. But both of these concealers seemed like they had a more similar finish. So just blending out the Stay Naked concealer, it's blending out so easily and obviously we did not need a lot of product to get this complete coverage. The finish is super smooth and despite it being so full coverage, it doesn't feel like I have a heavy layer of concealer under my eye. Okay, let's go in with the L'Oreal Infallible Concealer. Now this has a much bigger wand, which I actually think can be helpful if you want to use the concealer as your foundation or if you're just kind of putting a light wash of concealer on. Now they both have the same creamy consistency, but it's not thick. So very easy to blend out. Actually, those shades end up looking pretty similar on the skin. All right, as far as coverage goes, I think that they look exactly the same. They both blended out just as quickly and just as seamlessly. And the finish under both of my eyes is looking exactly the same. It's definitely a matte finish, but it doesn't look dry or flat. And it blended into my foundation, which is actually the infallible foundation, very well. It doesn't look like it is a stark contrast. Now I am going to set both of these concealers because that is something that I would do with under eye concealer regardless, especially because I get a lot of creasing in that deep line under my eye. So I'm just gonna kind of bake right here for a second. So the Urban Decay Stay Naked Concealer is $29 and the L'Oreal Infallible Concealer runs about nine to 12, depending on where you get it. Now with my under eyes set, I cannot tell the difference between the two concealers, but I'm excited to see how they hold up throughout the day. I just primed my eyes, so I'm ready for the next makeup dupes. Now this is a palette that was limited edition just this past holiday season. It's the Too Faced Enchanted Forest Palette. Now we're just gonna focus on the eyeshadows in this palette because there is a whole face side as well. But as you can see, the vibe of this is relatively neutral, but with some strong pops of pink. And the pops of pinks and berries, I think really create the overall vibe of this palette aside from the neutrals. And I think I found some pretty convincing dupes in the Revlon Enigma palette. Now obviously the Enigma palette is a lot smaller than the Enchanted Forest palette, but I think that it dupes the right shades to get you the same core colors that make the Enchanted Forest palette unique. So the Too Faced Enchanted Forest palette came in a makeup set for the holidays that you can no longer purchase. It was $44 and the Revlon Enigma palette is only $9.99. So obviously I'm only gonna be using the shades that I believe are dupes so we can hopefully get the same look on both sides. So on the Too Faced side, I'm gonna go into Let's Kringle, which is a light pinky beige. And that'll be my base shade. And the Revlon Enigma palette doesn't have shade names, but I'm going into this first shade, which is very similar. Back into the Too Faced palette, I'm going into All Is Calm for my transition shade. It is sort of a rosy taupe. 
And in the Enigma palette, very similar taupe shade right here in the middle. This one looks a little bit cooler in shade than the one in the Too Faced palette, but I will say that both of them have the same amount of kick up when digging into the shades. These mattes are very similar in texture. They're very soft. Okay, these were closer shade dupes than I thought now that they're actually on my eye. This was such an unexpected find too, but I thought this would be a fun palette to dupe because you can no longer get it anymore. So whether the price held you back or you just waited too long, it's kind of fun to find alternatives to makeup that you can no longer pick up. So the shade Christmas Sweater in the Too Faced palette I think was the star of the eyeshadow side. It's definitely the big pop of pink. So that's what I'm gonna be putting in my crease. Such a beautiful bright berry. Ugh, ugh, I love Too Faced eyeshadows. <laughs> Now in the Enigma palette, I think we have a pretty similar shade right here in the middle. Hopefully it goes on with as much intensity because that is the key to duping this shade. Okay, we might need to build this up just a tad, but I think the actual color is pretty dang close if you ask me. Looking in my monitor, the Too Faced side does look slightly brighter, but if you weren't looking for it, would you be able to tell that I'm wearing two different shades of eyeshadow? Tell me in the comments. In the Too Faced palette, I'm going into All Is Bright, which is sort of a warm champagne. I'm gonna pack that onto the lid. I'm actually gonna go in with my fingers on this one. I feel like we can get a little bit more intensity. So pretty. I am getting quite a bit of fallout on the Too Faced side. So just something to note. There's how that looks. Now this champagne shade in the Enigma palette looks so similar when it's just swatched on my arm. Let's see what we can do. Ooh, interesting. Now that I'm going in with my fingers, the shadow in the Enigma palette actually feels a lot more buttery than the shimmer in the Too Faced palette. Ooh, okay, so going in with my finger, I actually like the feel of the Revlon one better. Okay, looking at them side by side and really trying to be picky about it, the Revlon lid shade that we just put on does look slightly darker just by like a half shade than the Too Faced side. Now that I can see these looks completed side by side, these aren't exact dupes. I mean, on the Too Faced side, you can definitely see that brighter pop of pink, but if you liked the overall color story of the Too Faced palette, you're gonna get really close with the Revlon one. Next, I think I found a drugstore dupe for a high-end mascara. On this side, I'm gonna be applying the NARS Climax Mascara. This is $24, and on this side, I'm gonna be applying the Essence I Heart Extreme Volume Mascara, which is only $4.99. These mascaras are supposed to offer some intense volume. Now, I do wanna point out that the Climax Mascara is not waterproof, and the I Heart Extreme Mascara, while it does come in a normal version, the only one that I had was the waterproof version. Now, what led me into to thinking that these might be dupes, aside from the fact that they're both volumizing, is that they do also have pretty similar wands. They are on the thicker side, they taper at the top, and just the spacing of the bristles looked kind of similar. So let's go ahead and put the NARS one on first. I am gonna wipe off some of this formula just so we don't go in too hard. Okay, so this wand is doing a really good job at keeping my lashes separated as it coats them. I did curl both sides, but I can already tell that this side looks a little bit more open. Dang, this is a good mascara. <laughs> and y'all know how I feel about high-end mascaras. I very, very rarely think that it's worth it, almost never, unless you can get it on sale somehow. So if we can dupe this, I'll be very happy. <laughs> now let's go in with the essence. I'm gonna do the same thing and just wipe it off to start. This brush feels bigger. It feels a little bit more awkward to maneuver, I think, because it's longer. Ooh, we're getting very similar results, y'all. Definitely seeing the same amount of lift on this side as well. 
Like it's really just taking my curl and amplifying it a little bit. Now, funny enough, I feel like I'm getting more volume on the essence side. <laughs> Looking at my lashes side by side, just as a first impression, I would say that these mascaras are dupes, but I do wanna see how they do throughout the day. I've put on some blush and bronzer so we can move on to the next makeup dupes. I'm gonna be testing out the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder Palette against the Honest Beauty Luminizing Glow Powder. Both of these can be used either as a highlighter or as an all over finishing powder. I'm just gonna try both ways and see what happens. So the Hourglass Ambient lighting powder. I feel like this is a makeup classic in the beauty community. It comes with three shades. So this palette is $64. They do sell singles for $48. However, this middle shade is not sold separately and that's the one we're going to dupe. So I'm gonna be duping it with the Luminizing Glow Powder in the shade Midnight Reflection. They're both sort of neutral champagne-y shades. I'll show them swatched side by side, but obviously on the face, they're gonna look a lot more diffused. So let's see how they do. This middle shade in the Hourglass palette, by the way, is called Incandescent Light. So testing them out as a highlight first. Ooh. Now these are both supposed to give you a more subtle effect, sort of a soft focus glow, blurring and softening the skin. And I think that's exactly what we're getting with this ambient light powder. Very excited to see how it does against the Honest Beauty powder. Let me switch my brush. Yeah, I think we pretty much nailed the shade. So I'm going into a second layer. The first one was just a tiny bit more subtle on the honest side, so I'm trying to get it to match the hourglass side. But I think just two quick layers did the trick. I think we're getting the same amount of glow. What do you think? When it catches the light, you do get that reflection, but it's not harsh at all. And the Honest Luminizing Glow Powder is $19.99. A little pricey for a drugstore product, but again, it can be used as a highlight, it can be used as a finishing powder, and Honest Beauty products are typically a little bit on the higher end of the drugstore price spectrum. All right, now that I have these on as highlighters, I'm going to dust them very lightly all over the face as a finishing powder. Since we're already on the honest side, I'll go ahead and start there. Now I've actually only used this powder as a highlighter. I've never used it all over the face, but when you look up this product on the Honest Beauty website, this is how they have Jessica Alba demoing the product is as like an all over finishing glow. So I'm just gonna go over it lightly. And I think that's also what's nice about this not having a lot of sparkle is that if you do decide to use it like this, it's not gonna look like you're a disco ball, you know? I mean, we already set the under eye, but as I dust this over the other areas of my face, I think it's adding a really, really subtle, radiant effect, very subtle. But in general, my makeup's looking really smooth as well. Okay, let's go back in with the ambient lighting powder, that middle shade just lightly over this side. Yeah, like I see no difference, <laughs> no difference at all. This was one of the dupes I was most proud about when researching for this video, especially because you can't buy this shade individually. You have to buy the palette if you like it. So to be able to get something so similar at the drugstore, I was like, ooh, this is such a good find. <laughs> yeah, my skin looks so smooth on both sides. And I feel like they do have just the same amount of subtle glow. It doesn't look more reflective on one side versus the other, I don't think, at least as the finishing powder. And finally, we have some lipstick dupes. Now, this pair of products was actually brought to my attention by you all. Last year, I posted a video all about the Revlon Super Lustrous Glass Shine Lipsticks, and several of you told me in the comments that they looked like a dupe of the YSL Rouge Shine Lipsticks. So many people kept asking me, are they dupes? And I'm like, I don't know, I don't have a YSL lipstick, and then I remembered that I had this mini. I don't know where I got it, probably a birthday gift. Now, both of these lipsticks are supposed to offer high shine, medium coverage color. They are supposed to feel and moisturize like a balm that just melts into the lips. Now, these two shades are not gonna be exactly the same. I'm more so comparing the formula, but I think they're similar enough. So on the high-end side, I'm going to be applying the YSL Rouge Shine Lipstick in 49. Ooh. Okay, that's applying a little bit less hot pink than the tube looks. 
I can already tell you that this does feel like the Revlon lipstick. As you can see, we've got a lot of color coming through. It is still slightly translucent or glassy, but oh my gosh, it feels like butter. Like it just feels so good and lightweight. Okay, let's go in with the Revlon Super Lustrous Glass Shine Lipstick. This is the shade Dazzle Me Pink. Let's see how similar they are. Okay, not too bad. <laughs> the YSL one has a little bit more of a purpley undertone when you're looking at them side by side, but wow, I think you all called it. This is such a dupe just from the feeling of applying them. Yeah, this is gonna be so hard to keep separate because when I wear formulas like this on my lips, I just wanna like, mush them together. Okay, I think we got the same level of color intensity from the Revlon lipstick and this texture. It just feels exactly the same. They're both lightweight, they both melted into my lips, and they're both giving my lips so much love. Like they feel good and moisturized. Now obviously they are both glossy or glassy and they're not transfer proof or long wear formulas, but we'll see what happens. And I can't confirm whether or not there are exact shade dupes from these lines, but as far as how they feel and apply, yeah, these like might as well be the same lipstick that I put on. Here is the finished look using these makeup dupes. I think we got really close to the exact same look on both sides, but I'll check back at the end of the day to show you how they hold up. All right, I am back. It's been two seconds for you and six hours for me. I am so impressed with how the drugstore side of my face performed against the high-end products, and I am happy to report that these products are all in fact dupes, maybe with the exception of the eyeshadow, but like, let's get real, these are the same look. Let me zoom you in so you can check everything out up close. Not only did these concealers perform so similarly, but they both performed incredibly well. I'm not seeing any type of wear or breakdown under my eyes. I mean, everything still looks so smooth and fully covered, but when it comes to the deep lines that I have under my eyes, I actually think the L'Oreal concealer creased less than the Urban Decay concealer. So. That's a fun find. <laughs> Moving on to the eyeshadow, like I mentioned earlier, these are not exact shade matches, but they're pretty damn close. If you didn't know, then I don't think you'd be able to clock me for wearing two different eyeshadow palettes. Now, something that I did notice was that there was quite a lot of shimmer fallout on the Too Faced side from the lid shade that we used, and there was none of that on the Revlon side. So that made me happy, and that's something that would make me want to reach for the Revlon palette instead. With the mascara, I feel like there is hard Hardly a difference between the two, even at the end of the day. Both sides, my lashes are equally lifted still, which is very impressive. Funny enough, both of these mascaras had a little bit of flaking throughout the day. There was maybe a bit more on the Essence side, but not by much. I honestly cannot believe at the end of the day, these mascaras are like, indistinguishable. Another great dupe, I cannot tell the difference between the two powders that we used. The Hourglass side and the Honest side look just exactly the same. The glow is still going strong, both as a highlight and a finishing powder. And speaking of finishing powder, like my makeup as a whole, everywhere I dusted the powder over, it's still looking so smooth. So I think it did a pretty good job at also setting my makeup. But yeah, the effect on both sides, I'm just loving how my skin looks. And six hours into wearing makeup, I did not expect my skin to look like this. And I do still have that just very subtle radiance from the powder, but it hasn't turned shiny at all, which I appreciate. And finally, the lipsticks. So yes, these are 100% dupes. You all called it. Thank you so much for letting me know. When I ate lunch today, both the Revlon and YSL lipstick lost color, but I did not touch them up and I'm still pretty impressed with how much color is left on my lips for such a glossy formula that's not opaque. The shine is gone from both sides, but there's still noticeable color where I wouldn't feel like, oh my gosh, I need to touch up right now. It's still an even wash of color for both lipsticks. It might be the slightest bit stronger on the YSL side. I can't tell if it retained a little bit more color or if it was just a deeper color to start out with. But either way, these performed like dupes from start to finish, so 
I'm calling it. Tell me in the comments, how do you think these drugstore dupes held up against the high-end products? And do you want me to do another drugstore dupe video? Because there are a few in my back pocket that I did not mention today. Today's shout out goes to Jennifer. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad. And join me over in this video next where I try some new color pop makeup and sort of spill the tea on the brand with a little bit of a rant. I'll see you over there. Bye.